Welcome back, everybody. Listen, my next guest was named one of the 10 most influential rabbis in America by Newsweek. And uh, now he's sharing his wisdom in a book called More Beautiful Than Before, How Suffering Transforms Us. Please welcome Rabbi Steve Leader. <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Your temple has over 10,000 members, man. Yeah, With does. that many people needing your guidance, you, you ever get any days off? <laughs> <laughs> I never get a complete day off. There's always something that has to be done. But, you know, I love my work, so that makes it feel a little bit like something other than work. Wow. Now, your, your book is called More Beautiful Than Before, How Suffering Transforms Us. Right. What inspired this book? So I've been a rabbi for 30 years. I've seen and helped people through terrible, terrible, painful things. Right. And then I was in a horrible car accident about three and a half years ago. But what it revealed to me is that despite my best efforts to help people through those previous 27 years of pain, I actually knew very little about pain. And this book is my attempt to really talk to people about suffering and how that suffering can be something more than just suffering. You know, none of what we learn from pain is worth it, but neither is it worth less. So the point is, if you've got to go through hell, don't come out empty-handed. This is a book about not coming out of hell empty-handed. You have a great line in this book. Let me read this line, because I found this fascinating. You said, no one in pain, despite what they might say at the time, does better enduring their pain alone. Yes, that's right. You have to reach out when you're suffering. And will you be disappointed by some people? Yes, but you will be deeply moved by others. And the way I put it in the book is that when you reach out in your suffering, the people who matter don't mind. And the people who mind, they don't matter. <laughs> reach out. Right. Right. That's reach true. out. That's a true statement. Yeah. The other thing that the book talks about is what about when you're the one being reached out to? Then what? Yeah. When you see someone who's suffering, never say these seven words. Let me know if you need anything. First of all, most people who say it are hoping that the person never actually asks, right. right? And even if it is sincere, you're placing the burden upon the shoulders of the person who's already suffering. Right. Just figure it out. Show up. Do something. Don't wait to be asked. Just do it. That's very true, man. Yeah. Be honest with you, I actually hate when somebody does that to me. You know, I've sort of reached out to somebody and explained my situation. And I'm 10 minutes into the explanation, wow, man, that's deep. Yeah. Man, if you, if, if you if, ever need man, anything, if you ever let need me anything, know. let me yeah. know. I just let you know. Yeah. I, yeah. I, it's about 40 things I need in here, that's man. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And so, one of the things that pain does is it, it strips away a lot of nonsense from our lives, including a lot of people who are nonsense. That's, I, I'm telling you, man. It's true, isn't it? I've actually cleared up my life on several painful occasions because I found out who wasn't really there for That's me. That's right. The people who matter don't mind, and the people, people who mind don't, don't matter. matter. I got that right, man. Hey, let's do this, folks, because our rabbi leader has helped so many folks with his advice. I want to give my audience a chance to ask a few questions. Where's uh, Mindy? Hi, Rabbi. Hi, Mindy. I lost my older sister about a year and a half ago, and she's the last one in my family. And I'm happily married, and I have kids, but I feel like I've lost my past, in a way. Yes. I have no one else. She was my yes. touchstone. When that last person in your family dies, or, or when your spouse, with whom you've spent five, six decades with, dies, part of what's so painful is you lose the only other person in the world who knew what happened at that moment, on that day, in that place. And, and that, that's an incredibly sad part. You may want to think about some kind of daily, brief moment or ritual to think about your sister, a kind of vessel to contain it. Maybe it's lighting a candle. Maybe it's saying a, a, a little prayer. Maybe it's even just pausing for a, a minute or two to remember her, but most people find that if they create some vessel, some container for their grief each day, it, it will free up some of the rest of the day uh, to, to be less painful. Uh, and maybe the most honest thing I can say to you is that it, it won't always hurt this much. It, it gets better. 
Thank you. This is really some great information. Thank you, Rabbi. Listen, the book is called More Beautiful Than Before, How Suffering Transforms Us. It's available now. Check it out. Hey, folks, we'll be right back. That was really good. Hey, listen, if you all, uh, if you're sitting there thinking, I sure would like to see Steve Harvey YouTube videos on a regular basis, then guess what? Ha, you in luck, cause you can. All you gotta do is press the subscribe button or click on this list and see what other foolishness I've done. I'm ignorant. 